Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got a very simple hover effect for you today. Somebody's requested. We've done this before, but it's a great little effect, really easy to do. We've got a little blurb module there with an icon. If you roll over the image, nothing's going to happen. If you roll over the little blue line with the icon, it's going to pop up and reveal some text for us. Take your mouse off, it's going to disappear. Really easy to do. There's one tiny little line of coding in this today. Don't let that put you off. It is literally one little line and I'll put it below the video for anybody that wants to copy and paste. Apart from that, really easy to do and that's an effective thing to have on your site. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Once enabled, let's go down where we want to work. I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside I've got a row, the green tab, with two columns, column one, column two. I'm going to add whatever module we want here. I'm actually using a blurb module because it's got a little icon, but this will work with any module you want to use. So let's hit the little black button. Divi comes as standard with all these modules here, plenty enough to build just about any site. I'm going to use a simple blurb module for this today, like I say, purely because it's got an icon. I'm not going to style it or do anything dramatic like that. Obviously put your title there if you want to. Put your text there. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. And this is a regular text field, so you can justify, bold, italicize, make bullets lists, add titles, and add media if you want to. But like I say, I'm leaving mine just like that. Image and icon, it puts a placeholder there. I'm going to have an icon for mine today, like a little up arrow as we're going to slide up with this effect today. Let's use the double for this one, perhaps. Great, so there it is. Now, obviously, if you want to link your module somewhere down below, we've got a link. You can link the title and the module separately, so you can have one link for your title and another one for your module, or the same link for both. Obviously, put your links in there. And always best practice if you're linking, leave it in the same window if you're linking to your site. If you're linking to somebody else's site or off-site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Okay. Well, I'm good there. I'm going to add perhaps a background color. I'm going into the background. You've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern, or background mask. I'm going to add a symbol color. I use blue there. Let's just use that again, I guess. As you can see, we've got a background color in there. Okay, I'm good with our content section now. Let's move over to the design. And again, I'm going to make this pretty simple. I'm not going to do anything elaborate here today. Image and icon, I'm going to make my icon perhaps white in color. I'm going to take it down a lot in size. It's okay where it is. I'm going to take it down to oh, maybe 35 picks, something like that. 36, it's 35. Great. It's fine where it is in the middle there. Let's roll on down. Text wise, I'm going to have everything in the middle. I'm going to make mine light in color. You can style them both separately if you want, the title and the text. You can either go to them down below here in title and body text, or I don't know if you noticed when I rolled over our little blurb image here, little blue circles with a white paintbrush in. If you click on the one attached to whatever it is you want to edit, it'll take you straight to the edit for that title body icon. Okay, that's fine. Right, let's go into our title. I'm just going to capitalize that, I think. I'm going to leave the regular font. Divi, as I'm sure you know, if you've seen any of my other videos, Divi, Divi comes with a huge amount of fonts, a crazy amount. If you want to audition one, just simply roll over it. It'll give you an example. I'm going to leave mine on the default today, though. Okay, moving on down. I don't want to do anything else with our text there, body text. Sizing-wise, I'm going to give our module a fixed height here. So I'm going to go into sizing, width, width, max width, min height, height. This is where I want to put in. I'm going to make mine say 300, which will give me a sort of ish aspect for the image that I'm going to have going on there. And for you, those of you that haven't watched any of my hover effect videos before, a lot of these image to text videos work with an image in the actual column that the module's residing in, 
and then we just adjust the module and that's what we're doing today so the size of the module is going to dictate the shape of the image and that's about right aspect for whatever image I'm going to use there great well let's just go down to spacing a little bit below here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a small amount of padding on the top just say five pixels that'll work for me obviously adjust yours to taste I'm actually not going to put any bottom padding on there as we've got a fixed height I'll put a bit left and right let's say 25 pixels just put in the 25 hit the chain it'll do the opposite side view that gives it a bit of padding either side there I want to kind of push this down a bit but rather than use padding or a bit of code to do it I'm just going to increase the line height on my title there so if we close back spacing there let's go back into our title text here I'm going to capitalize it, I think. And I'm also going to go down. Text size is OK, but the line height, I want more space top and bottom between the icon and the actual writing there. So the line height, I'm just going to roll up till it looks correctish to me. Something like that's fine. 2.5, maybe even a little bit more. That's going to work for me. Great. So we've got our basic blur module or whatever module you care to use here. That's great. So let's put our image in there. To do that, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to go into the green tab for the row. We're working on the second column here, the right hand column, column one, column two is the right hand column. So I'm going to go into the column, make sure you go into the column and don't do what I'm doing now in the main row settings. So we go into the column, it says column settings right there. Not going to put a link in there you can put another link in there if you wanted to and just link the image to something else if you want to background here's where we put our image in i'm going to go into the background we've got color gradient image choose whatever images you want to choose for yours let's perhaps use a different image this time and you can't see it because our blurb module is on top of it so it's this image is right behind there and I'll reveal it in just a second. Now while we're in the column here, what's going to happen here is I'm going to move our blurb image, the blue one here, down so we can just see our little icon here at the bottom. But I don't want to see any of this when we move it down. I don't want it spilling out of our column so we can see it. I want it to stop where our column stops, which is right there. So to do that, let's go over to our advanced. This is where I'm going to write one little line of code, and it's so simple. We'll go down to custom CSS in the main element. I'm simply going to write height, colon. I think we use 300 picks, so I'll make the column the same as our module height there. Now our column and our module are the same size, but when we push this down, like I say, I don't want to see any anything that's outside of it or what they call overflow. So I could write overflow hidden here, but they actually give us one in the advance. If we close up custom CSS, we can go down to visibility, horizontal overflow, vertical overflow. I'm going to change both of those to hidden. That way, when we push that module down, we're not going to see it past this line, the bottom of our little column there. Great. So let's do that. We're going to save our column setting, which will take us back to the row. We're going to save the row settings. I'm going to go into the little module itself here. I'm going to go over to design and spacing. And I'm going to use a little bit of margin to put it down. So I know this is 300. We'll try 250. That should give us about right amount left at the top. So if I say margin top 250, that's perfect. It should actually line up with our one on the other side too. Great, that's good. But that's what I initially want to see. I don't want anything to happen when they hover over the picture. But when they hover over the little blue line here, I want it to pop back up. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear next to it. Go to the thing that you want to affect, in our case the margin here. There's a little arrow. We can set a hover state when the mouse is on it and a desktop state. Desktop states when the mouse is not on it. So desktop state, we want what we're looking at now, 250 pixels at the top. When they hover over it, I'm going to change that back to zero. 
so that'll slide our module over the top. So they've got that. Now the time it takes to get from desktop to hover state by default with the Divi theme is 300 milliseconds or just under a third of a second, which is pretty quick. It, it would actually work for this situation. I like to slow mine down a little bit for drama. That's entirely up to you. But if you want to slow it down or even speed it up, go to your advanced tab, go down to transitions. There you'll find the default 300. Let's slow it down to maybe 500 or half a second. And you can use the slider. You can type in a value and you can increment up and down with the little arrows right there too. And that'll work for me. I'm going to leave the transition speed curve on ease. Ease in, ease out is a popular one for me for hover effects, but ease works for this too. Transition delay, I don't want any delay. I want it to happen as soon as they pop their mouse on that blue line there. Okay, the only other option is you may want to show a bit of your image through your little blue line there. If you do, still in the blue blow up setting, remember we gave it a blue background. You can go into the blue, just click on the blue field of your color. You'll see a variegated slider here. This is opacity or transparency or see-throughness. If you want to see some of the image through it, and simply take the opacity down a bit. As you can see, you've got some of the image bleeding through there. I'm going to leave mine as a solid line, but that's just another little option for you. So if I did take that down a little bit so you could see it, and we go to hover state, you can see, you can read that writing nicely, but you can still see some of the image through it, but that's entirely up to you. Like I say, I'm going to leave my opacity slider or transparency slider all the way up so we've got a solid line. Great, well if we've done everything correctly now, this should work for us. So let's save our changes here. We'll save the page changes. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. And there we have it. There's our two little images. There's the first one I demonstrated. Like I say, nothing's going to happen until we hover over the actual icon itself. And like we said, you can link the title or the whole blurb to somewhere. And you can even link the image itself, the column, to somewhere if you want to. Here's the one we've just done. Again, nothing's going to happen when we put our mouse over the top. Slide over the little blue line or the icon there. It's going to pop up. Mouse off. It's going to drop back down there. That's a great little thing to have on your site. It's really eye-catching. People are mousing around. It's going to get their attention. Of course, this is fully responsive too. I'm using Google Chrome here. If I hit the F12 to bring up the inspector tools, and I hit the responsive toggle here. Let's make that a bit bigger. Here we are on uh, an iPad Air. As you can see, there it is. So you just tap on it. It's going to pop up. Tap off it. It's going to click down. There's the new one, tap, tap, and it should work perfectly on a phone as well. Let's look at it on 12. You may decide to change the aspect ratio or the height of it. I mean, this is going to work for me as long as all that text fits in there. Click, yeah, that text fits in there. And same with our one below here. Yeah, that works absolutely perfectly. Let's get rid of this now. So there you go, guys. There's a little hover effect for you really easy to do like I say that tiny bit of code that I've done is just down below the video for anybody who wants to use it so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day